From the smoke-filled back rooms of 1960s California to the roaring motors of outlaw brotherhood, Sonny Barger is a household name because he is widely considered to be one of the most brutal and influential original members of the Hells Angels motorcycle gang. On October 8, 1938, the world was introduced to Ralph Hubert Sonny Barger, who would go on to leave an indelible impression on the biker subculture as the leader of the Hells Angels. Sonny Barger was instrumental in the growth and development of the Hells Angels from their 1948 beginnings in Fontana, California. The club's reputation for anarchy, fraternity, and disregard for authority quickly spread. Barger was a natural leader who could inspire his followers to embrace risk, devotion, and camaraderie. The Hells Angels, led by Barger's ruthlessness, rose to prominence as one of the most influential gangs of motorcycle outlaws. The organization's presence spread across the United States and expanded internationally, with chapters established in various countries. But along with this expansion came the stigma of being a place where crime and illegality thrive. Barger's time in office was marked by controversies and legal problems. He was captured various times and indicted for wrongdoings, like medication dealing, attack, and murder. Club members respected him, and opponents feared him because of his charisma and his ability to escape law authorities for much of his life. Barger remained a major presence in the Hells Angels until his retirement in 2002. Despite facing multiple legal fights and severe scrutiny from law authorities, the Hells Angels gained a reputation as one of the most infamous criminal organizations in the world during his tenure as their commander. The Life and Times of Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club Barger gave an insider's perspective of the biker lifestyle and his own experiences, providing insight into the organization and philosophy of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Different people have different feelings on Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels, as is the case with any legendary individual. There are those who admire his independence and fear him as a dangerous criminal who spreads anarchy and mayhem. It is undeniable, however, that Sonny Barger was instrumental in developing the Hells Angels into their present form. The Hells Angels have had to deal with internal tensions, shifts in leadership, and increased scrutiny from government police in recent years. Although Sonny Barger has long since left the club, his legacy lives on. Even after he stopped being actively involved, his influence on motorcycle culture and the public's view of outlaw by groups was profound, and his legacy lives on in the Hells Angels. Rise to Prominence Under Barger's leadership, the Hells Angels grew rapidly and expanded its chapters across the United States and around the world. Barger's personality and leadership bonded the club members closer together. The Death Head logo, featuring a skull with wings, became instantly recognizable as the trademark of the Hells Angels and a symbol of the group's rebellious spirit turf wars and rivalries. As the Hells Angels expanded, they often clashed with other outlaw motorcycle clubs, engaging in violent turf wars and bitter rivalries. As a result of these tensions, the club was the scene of several clashes and scandals that contributed to its already infamous notoriety. Criminal activities and legal troubles. The Hells Angels gained notoriety for their involvement in various criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, illegal gambling, and arms trafficking. Barger himself was arrested and convicted multiple times over the years, but he was often able to evade serious consequences thanks to his legal acumen and devoted followers. Media and public perception. Throughout the years, the media portrayed the Hells Angels as a dangerous and lawless organization, further fueled by high profile incidents and clashes with law enforcement. The media portrayal of Barger as a vicious and strong biker commander is mostly due to his participation in documentaries, interviews, and news reports. Works by Barger in the last part of the 1990s, Sonny Barger delivered his self-portrayal, named Damnation's Heavenly Messenger, The Life and Seasons of Sonny Barger and the Damnation's Heavenly Messenger's Bike Club. The book offered pursuers an uncommon look into the inward functions of the Hell's Heavenly Messengers and gave understanding into Barger's life, encounters, and point of view on the club's set of experiences. Retirement and Legacy In 2002, Sonny Barger announced his retirement from the Hell's Angels, stepping down from his active leadership role. His impact on the group's norms and traditions, however, endured. Even after he retired, Barger was still looked up to by many members of the club. After Barger's retirement, the Hells Angels experienced internal strife and a change of leadership. Different viewpoints and difficulties were faced by the group when new generations joined. Additionally, increased law enforcement pressure and crackdowns on outlaw motorcycle clubs affected the Hells Angels' operations.
the Hells Angels and Sonny Barger's character have left an indelible mark on mainstream society. The Hells Angels and other illegal motorcycle clubs have been the subject of several films, books, and television episodes. There is no doubting the huge impact that Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels had on motorcycle culture, criminal history, and public perception, but the legacy of Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels remains disputed. They remain a potent emblem of the complexity of the outlaw biker subculture and the spirit of defiance it represents. Notable Incidents and Feuds Throughout the history of the Hells Angels, there have been several notable incidents and feuds that have contributed to their reputation as a dangerous and powerful motorcycle club. At the Altamont Free Concert in 1969, a young man named Meredith Hunter was killed when the Hells Angels were recruited as security and clashed with the concert goers. The club's reputation was damaged by this incident, and its reputation for violence was reinforced. Leadership Style of Sonny Barger Sonny Barger's leadership style was characterized by a blend of charisma, charm, and ruthlessness. He was strict in his demands for devotion and respect from his club members, and the Hells Angels respected him for his no-nonsense approach to preserving order. Barger left the club for several decades as it faced numerous legal issues and remained together under his direction. Motorcycle Club Culture The Hells Angels culture goes beyond just the criminal activities and violence often associated with outlaw motorcycle clubs. Numerous club goers relate to the club's beliefs of fraternity and fellowship fellowship, as well as its accentuation on doing things ones as own would prefer. The club's rites, rituals, and distinctive culture have become symbols of the biker subculture at large, down to the leather vests adorned with patches. International Expansion Under Sonny Barger's leadership, the Hells Angels expanded globally, establishing chapters in various countries, including Canada, Australia, the UK, and other European nations. The Hells Angels' international expansion has helped cement their status as one of the world's most influential criminal motorcycle gangs. Law Enforcement and Legal Challenges Throughout its existence, the Hells Angels have been under constant scrutiny from law enforcement agencies worldwide. Multiple investigations and actions have been conducted by law enforcement to combat the club's criminal activities. This has led to arrests, convictions, and the seizure of club assets. Impact on Motorcycle Clubs The Hells Angels' success and reputation have influenced the formation and activities of other outlaw motorcycle clubs. In imitation of the Hells Angels, certain groups have adopted similar emblems and organizational styles. However, not all outlaw motorcycle clubs engage in criminal activities, and many clubs focus primarily on riding and socializing. Attempts at rebranding In recent years, the Hells Angels have made efforts to rebrand themselves, distancing the club from its more notorious past. To better their standing in the community, several groups' local chapters have begun hosting charity events and implementing outreach activities. Existence and persistence in the face of change. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is still active and visible today. Despite the many obstacles it has had to overcome, they continue to evoke both fascination and dread as a symbol of criminal biker culture. In conclusion, Sonny Barger was a larger-than-life figure and one of the most ruthless and influential founders of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. He was instrumental in starting and growing the club, which gained a reputation for deviance, criminality, and violence. Through decades of glory and controversy, Barger kept the Hells Angels together as a close-knit fraternity because of his charisma and leadership skills. With his leadership, the club expanded internationally, with chapters opening all over the world. But how did Barger navigate the treacherous world of motorcycle gangs and rise to prominence within the Hells Angels? What were the pivotal moments that shaped Barger's reputation as a formidable force within the outlaw community? And, importantly, what legacy did Sonny Barger leave behind, and how has his influence shaped the world of motorcycle clubs to this day? Well, join us as we unravel the enigma of the most brutal Hells Angel in history, Sonny Barger. The legend of Sonny Barger, from Rebel Youth to Hells Angels icon. From founding the notorious Hells Angels Oakland chapter to engaging in drug deals, kidnapping, and even murder, Sonny Barger's life is a gripping tale of rebellion and notoriety. But to understand the man behind the legend, we must first explore his humble beginnings. Early Life Ralph Hubert Barger Jr. was born on October 8, 1938, in Modesto, California, amidst a backdrop of post-war turmoil. But life in Oakland, where he grew up, was far from peaceful. With industries crumbling and unemployment on the rise, the city faced its own battles, and young Barger found himself drawn into the fray. Even in his youth, 
Barger was a force to be reckoned with. School was no match for his rebellious spirit as suspensions piled up and confrontations with teachers and classmates became commonplace. Formal education failed to captivate Barger, prompting him to abandon it altogether. While others succumbed to the allure of drugs, Barger sought a different path. He found solace in the simplicity of honest work, laboring in a local grocery store amidst the urban tumult. But within him burned a restless desire for something more, something extraordinary. At just 16, he made a bold decision to enlist in the United States Army, seeking the discipline, camaraderie, and expertise in weaponry that military life promised. However, fate had other plans. His military dreams were dashed when a fake birth certificate was uncovered, leaving him to navigate an uncertain future upon his return to Oakland. Back home, Barger became a nomad, drifting between menial jobs and seeking refuge within the confines of his family's home. Little did he know this was only the beginning of his extraordinary journey. Destiny had marked him for greatness, destined for adventures in the darkest corners of the world. It was during these tumultuous times that Barger's path intersected with the infamous Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Drawn to the camaraderie and sense of belonging that the club offered, he made the fateful decision to join their ranks. Little did he realize this decision would shape the course of his life in ways he could never have imagined. Hells Angels. In 1948, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club roared to life in Fontana, California, embodying a spirit of rebellion and freedom on two wheels. However, it wasn't until the late 1950s that a pivotal figure, Sonny Barger, would enter the scene, forever altering the course of the club's history. Rising through the ranks with unparalleled speed, Barger soon found himself at the helm of the Hells Angels Oakland branch, a position from which he would leave an indelible mark on the motorcycle club world. Sonny Barger's ascent to leadership within the Hells Angels was fueled by a potent combination of charisma, assertiveness, and exceptional leadership skills. Renowned for his fearless riding and rugged demeanor, Barger commanded respect and loyalty from his fellow members, propelling him to the forefront of the club's leadership. But Barger's influence extended far beyond the confines of the motorcycle club. He played a central role in several high-profile events that thrust the Hells Angels into the public eye, notably the infamous Hollister Riot of 1947 and the Altamont Free Concert of 1969 became defining moments in the club's legacy, solidifying its reputation as a symbol of rebellion and lawlessness. Despite the controversy surrounding these incidents, Barger remained undeterred in his mission to expand the Hells Angels' influence. He spearheaded the establishment of new chapters across the United States, fueling the club's growth and cementing its status as a national force to be reckoned with. However, Barger's life was not without its share of turmoil and conflict. His life was marked by drama, violence, and frequent appearances in courtrooms, which he humorously referred to as his gangster era. Despite the challenges and legal battles, Barger remained steadfast in his commitment to the Hells Angels and the brotherhood they represented. The Gang Era. Now, let's delve into a tumultuous period in the history of the Hells Angels, a time marked by challenges, controversies, and a struggle for survival in the face of mounting opposition. It was a moment when various clubs and individuals attempted to undermine the Hells Angels' reputation, stirring up hatred among different communities. The black and Latino populations detested them, while white people were scared, hippies avoided them, and even rednecks despised them. According to Sonny Barger, the Hells Angels became increasingly isolated during this turbulent time. One pivotal event that rocked Sonny Barger's world occurred in April 1970, when he was arrested on narcotics charges. The arrest came after a film studio property manager and former Mr. America 1967, Donald Howarth, was detained near Barger's home. Horwath was discovered with a substantial amount of illegal narcotics, including cocaine and heroin valued at $350,000. Barger, then the president of the Oakland chapter, resigned from his position in the aftermath of the arrest. However, Barger's hiatus from leadership was short-lived. His successor, John Johnny Angel Palomar, was soon sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting a bartender. This turn of events prompted Barger's swift return to his position as president. Despite the narcotics accusations against Barger, the charges were eventually dropped. In contrast, Howarth was convicted and sentenced to five years to life in prison. Barger, 
on the other hand, received a 90-day jail sentence for leaving a court session. But this was just the beginning of a series of events that would further tarnish the Hells Angels' reputation. In another incident, Barger found himself involved in a high-speed chase through Redwood Regional Park alongside four other club members, Russell Bayea, Bobby Dirt England, Oakland, Gary Popkin, and Burt Stephenson. The chase ensued after park guards accused the occupants of two vehicles, a Pontiac and a Cadillac, of poaching. The pursuit ended when the Pontiac crashed into a tree after park rangers shot out its tires. Amidst the chaos, it was discovered that three club prospects, William Hood, Russell Huddleston, and Danny Jarman, had been chained, gagged, and savagely assaulted in the trunk of the Pontiac. Despite Hood and Jarman's injuries, all three suspects were apprehended. During the pursuit, various objects, including firearms, surgical gloves, and a belt engraved with Barger's name and tenure as president of the Hells Angels Oakland chapter, were discarded from the fleeing Cadillac. Barger and his associates were subsequently charged with attempted murder, kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon. Despite the club's attorney's assertions of insufficient evidence and illegal search tactics by arresting authorities, Barger and his cohorts ultimately pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of wrongful imprisonment. But the ordeal didn't end there for Barger. Alongside fellow Hell's Angels members, Sergey Walton, Donald Duane, Whitey Smith, and Oakland Gary Popkin, he faced another serious charge, the murder of drug dealer Servio Winston Ajiro. Ajiro had flown to Oakland with a cargo of cocaine, and his murder was allegedly motivated by a disagreement over an $80,000 cocaine deal. A prosecution witness, Richard Ivaldi, claimed to have witnessed Barger killing Ajero while he slept at an acquaintance's home. Ivaldi further alleged that Barger instructed the others to set fire to the house. However, after a seven-week trial, Barger and his three co-defendants were acquitted on December 29, 1972. Questions arose regarding Ivaldi's credibility, and Barger's girlfriend, Sharon Grulka, provided an alibi, stating she was with him at the time of the murder. Barger's lead counsel, James Crew, asserted that Ivaldi was involved in the plot and attempted to shift blame to the Hells Angels due to fear of reprisal from the Texas Mafia. However, the aftermath of these events was marred by a string of suspicious murders in the local area. The day after Aguero's murder, three men, including drug traffickers, were discovered shot to death at a residence near San Leandro. Additionally, the body of a woman named Karen S. Long was found in the trunk of a car in Oakland, and Long's ex-husband was later found dead in an apparent suicide. These incidents further fueled speculation and added to the chaos surrounding the Hells Angels. In March 1973, Sonny Barger faced sentencing for a separate set of charges. He was found guilty of possessing narcotics for sale and possessing a handgun as a convicted felon. Barger was sentenced to 10 years in prison, forcing him to relinquish his leadership of the Oakland chapter for the first time since its inception. Despite being incarcerated, Sonny Barger continued to wield influence over the Hells Angels, even orchestrating a motorbike run near Bass Lake before his arrest. Prior to his imprisonment, he appointed Fillmore Cross as his international successor, only for Cross to be incarcerated in 1975 for possession of amphetamines. But Barger was not forgotten. Despite these setbacks, Barger received immense support from his fans, with a biker magazine launching a Free Sonny Barger campaign, selling merchandise to fund his legal battles. Barger capitalized on media opportunities, including interviews with prominent figures like Geraldo Rivera, portraying himself as a model prisoner with hopes for eventual release. Remarkably, during his time behind bars at Folsom State Prison, Barger studied sociology while awaiting legal proceedings a side of him that is often overlooked in the media's portrayal of him as a hard-end outlaw. In April 1977, he achieved a significant legal victory when the California Supreme Court granted him a retrial on a marijuana possession conviction, leading to his release after serving four and a half years of his sentence. Upon his parole, Barger wasted no time making significant moves within the Hells Angels. In December 1977, he formed the first Hells Angels chapter in Canada, expanding the club's reach internationally. Yves Lebas Buteau was granted the prestigious honor of wearing a Hells Angels jacket labeled International, a symbolic gesture of the club's global expansion. However, legal troubles continued to plague Barger following his release. In March 1978, he faced arrest on a parole violation charge for gun possession. 
Police discovered firearms at his Oakland residence, but Barger's wife, Sharon, testified that the weapons belonged to her, resulting in the dismissal of the case against him. Despite these legal entanglements, the Hells Angels expanded their influence beyond California, establishing chapters across several states. The rivalry between the Hells Angels and the Outlaws escalated in November 1978, sparked by conflicts over territorial disputes and control of the methamphetamine trade. The FBI asserted that both gangs vied for dominance in this illicit industry. With authorities charging the Hells Angels with monopolizing methamphetamine, manufacturing in the United States. Barger acknowledged some members' involvement in drug-related activities, but likened it to law enforcement personnel engaging in similar behavior. In an attempt to quell tensions, Barger and other top Hells Angels officials initiated peace talks with the outlaws. However, the purported peace conference turned out to be a ruse intended to eliminate the leadership of their rivals. The betrayal by one of their own Kenite, who disclosed the plot to the outlaws, resulted in his expulsion from the Hells Angels. During the murder trial of a Hells Angels member accused of killing an outlaws member in October 1982, Barger and a group of Hells Angels sought to intimidate jurors and assert their presence. Despite attempts by the Angels to intimidate jurors, the accused was acquitted, prompting Barger to organize a celebratory gathering in his honor. Even as he battled throat cancer in 1983, Barger remained an influential figure within the Hells Angels, delegating some responsibilities to his second-in-command, O'Farrell. Barger's presence continued to loom large over the organization. In June 2022, Sonny Barger passed away, leaving behind a legacy marred by legal troubles, but defined by his unwavering dedication to the Hells Angels. Despite the controversies and criminal accusations, his impact on the club's history remains undeniable, cementing his place as one of the most iconic figures in biker culture. Sansitur Personal Life Now let's take a peek into Barger's personal life, particularly his marriage to Zorana Barger. Zorana, a woman whose life intertwined with that of a motorcycle legend, Sonny Barger, was more than just a wife. Born in Los Angeles, her journey was as adventurous as a ride along the Pacific Coast Highway. With creativity and independence as her companions, Zorana carved out a unique path for herself over 65 years. She wasn't just Sonny's wife, she was an executive producer, a writer, and above all, a motorcycle enthusiast. Their story began in the early 2000s, a time marked by the rumble of bikes and the dawn of a new millennium. Despite being Sonny's fourth wife, Zorana brought a fresh energy into his life. Their love story culminated in a summer wedding in June 2005, surrounded by the roar of engines and the spirit of the open road. But who is Zorana beyond her association with Sonny? Despite her public persona, her private life remains just that, private. The details of her childhood, relatives, and school life are sparse. Her career, however, is where her passion for bikes truly shines through. It's as if she's written her own story but kept it off the social media grid. In 2013, Zorana took on the role of a producer for Dead in Five Heartbeats, a film encapsulating the heart, grit, and growling engines of the motorcycle world. Additionally, she co-authored The Lil Bike Crew, a children's book series aimed at igniting the spirit of adventure in young hearts. Zorana's love for motorcycles wasn't just professional, it was personal too. She shared Sonny's passion for hitting the road, feeling the freedom that only two wheels can offer. Despite the ups and downs, including Sonny's battle with prostate cancer in 2012 and later liver cancer, Zorana stood by him until his final days in June 2022. Before Zorana, Sonny had ventured into matrimony thrice before. His first partner, Elsie Marr, tragically passed away due to an embolism, setting a somber tone for his romantic journey. Subsequently, Sonny found companionship in Sharon Grulke, whom he wed inside the walls of Folsom Prison in 1973. Their union was unconventional, to say the least. Later, Sonny found love again with Noel, who not only became part of his life, but also embraced the lifestyle of the notorious Hells Angels. But his marriage with Zorana wasn't just a formality. It was an 18-year-long adventure filled with life, love, and a shared passion for motorcycles. Sonny's public displays of affection especially on social media, showcased their life together, particularly on anniversaries. Even during Sonny's health battles, Zorana remained his steadfast companion, 
offering unwavering support through thick and thin. In his final moments, Sonny reflected on his long and adventurous life, enriched by the fellowship of an amazing club. His sense of peace and acceptance of life's journey serve as a reminder that life, much like a good ride, is about the journey itself, not just the destination. All right, let's now clear the air about Zorana and Sonny Barger's family tree. You might expect a couple with such a vibrant life to have a bunch of little bargers running around, right? Well, here's the twist. Zorana and Sonny didn't have any kids. It's true. Sonny's sister, Shirley Rogers, set the record straight. There were no biological children in this chapter of the Barger saga. But wait, there's a bit of a plot twist. A guy named William James Barger pops up making some noise about being Sonny's son. He's been in a bit of trouble here and there, and suddenly he's claiming to be part of the Barger lineage. Shirley wasn't having any of it, though. She's been through this before. It seems claims about hidden bargers have come out of the woodwork over the years, and Shirley has been the gatekeeper, sorting fact from fiction. And get this, the local sheriff, Mr. Ron Peckman, got involved too. He's backing Shirley up, saying William's been spinning tales, using the barger name for his own gain, even throwing around threats. The whole situation is a reminder that stories can be just as tangled as the roots on a cross-country bike ride. And in the case of the Barger family, it looks like the only legacy they're passing on is made of memories, not genetics. Sonny Barger, a man whose name rings loud in the ears of those who run their fingers over the throttles of their motorcycles, was much more than just an emblem of biker culture. His journey started on the 8th of October, 1938, in Modesto, California, and what a ride it was. Known to the world as Ralph Hubert Sonny Barger, he grew from the young boy left by his mother at the tender age of four to a figure that would one day become a legend. Now imagine a four-year-old navigating a world with an absent mother and an alcoholic father. That was Sonny's early life, a life that taught him the grit he'd carry throughout his years. He and his sister Shirley didn't have the cushioned childhood many dream of, and perhaps it was this rough start that shaped the resilience we've come to associate with the Barger name. By the 1960s, he was not just a founding member, but also the national president of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, a name synonymous with freedom, rebellion, and the roar of engines. But Sonny's influence didn't stop at the clubhouse doors. You might recall his rugged presence in the 1967 film Hells Angels on Wheels, or perhaps remember him as Lenny the Pimp Janowitz in the TV series Sons of Anarchy. These weren't just roles, they were extensions of a life lived unapologetically on the edge. But Sonny's creativity wasn't confined to the roar of motorcycles and the camera's lens. He was also a storyteller, penning books like Hell's Angel, The Life and Times of Sonny Barger, and Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club. The plot thickens when we learn that by the 1980s, the smoke from Sonny's notorious lifestyle caught up with him, leading to a throat cancer diagnosis. The price? His voice, which had to be reinvented after his vocal cords were removed. Then, in 2012, life threw another curveball with a prostatic cancer diagnosis, leading to yet another battle, which, true to his nature, he faced it head on. By June 2022, though, Sonny was up against liver cancer, and in his own words, shared in a poignant Facebook note, he lived a long and good life, filled with adventure and took pride in being part of an amazing club. His passing at 83 marked the end of an era, with the news shared on his own Facebook page, leading many to reflect on the impact of this man who was, in so many ways, larger than life. After traversing the life and times of Zorana and Sonny Barger, we're left with echoes of engines and tales of resilience. Sonny Barger's legacy is not just one of rebellion and defiance, but also one of strength, determination, and the unyielding spirit of the open road. And though the road may have come to an end for Sonny, his legend lives on, inspiring generations to come to embrace their own journey, wherever it may lead. Now, while many are familiar with his tales of rebellion and intrigue, there's still much to uncover about this enigmatic figure. Beyond the well-known stories lie lesser-known facts and details that shed new light on Sonny Barger's life. Let's now take a look at 10 intriguing facts that may surprise you about Sonny Barger. 10 Intriguing Facts About Sonny Barger Number 1. Did you know that the influential figurehead of the Hells Angels, born on October 8, 1938, in Modesto, California, was originally registered as Ralph Hubert Barger Jr. at birth? 
Growing up in post-World War II America, Barger was introduced to motorcycle culture early on and was drawn to the sense of camaraderie and freedom associated with riding. But how did he come to be known as Sonny Barger? His transformation into the notorious figure occurred during his formative years within the Hells Angels. The origin of the nickname Sonny has multiple narratives, but one prevailing explanation suggests it originated from a childhood nickname. As a youngster, Ralph Barger was known among friends and family as Sonny Boy, a moniker that stuck with him through his adolescence. Later, as he became deeply embedded in the Hells Angels and rose through the ranks, the boy was dropped, leaving him simply as Sonny. This evolution of his name reflects his journey from youth to adulthood and from a regular boy to a legendary figure within the motorcycle club. Number 2. When delving into the world of the Hells Angels, one might assume that Sonny Barger, a prominent figure within the club, would have a deep love for Harley-Davidson motorcycles. However surprising as it may seem, Barger's personal preference lies elsewhere. Despite the rule within the Hells Angels that all members must ride a Harley-Davidson, Barger has expressed a fondness for motorcycles made by foreign companies like Honda and BMW. This unexpected revelation challenges the stereotype that links Barger and the Hells Angels exclusively with American-made Harley-Davidsons. Although Barger has been seen riding Harley-Davidsons, his choice to ride Honda and BMW bikes instead showcases his appreciation for the craftsmanship, performance, and reliability offered by these foreign manufacturers. His preference for these brands highlights his practicality and willingness to prioritize functionality and innovation over brand loyalty or perceived image associations. It's important to understand that Barger's choice doesn't diminish his iconic status within the Hells Angles or the Browder Motorcycle Club culture. Instead, it emphasizes his ability to break stereotypes and be his own person while still being an influential figure in the world of motorcycle enthusiasts. Number 3. Now, did you know that during the early 70s, the Hells Angels were involved in an unexpected operation with the police? Yes, you heard that right. Despite their rebellious image, the infamous biker club took a surprising turn in Oakland, California. In those years, Oakland was a hotbed for various fringe groups like the Black Panthers and the Weather Underground, known for their radical beliefs and confrontational tactics. This led to tensions and concerns about potential violence, especially due to the presence of illegal firearms in the community. Contrary to expectations, reports revealed that the Hells Angels were actively acquiring illegal weapons in the area. However, their intentions were not what people assumed. Led by their iconic leader, Sonny Barger, the Hells Angels had a different plan. Barger orchestrated a clandestine operation to prevent these firearms from falling into the hands of radical groups. Instead of keeping the weapons for themselves, they strategically acquired them and then handed them over to the police. This unexpected collaboration demonstrated their willingness to protect the community from harm, even if it meant working with the authorities. A stark contrast to their usual rebellious image, prompting us to question our assumptions about their motives and actions. Number 4. Sonny Barger's early life took a sharp turn when, at the age of 16 in 1955, he made a daring decision to drop out of high school and enlist in the Army. Driven by a thirst for adventure and a desire to find purpose beyond the classroom, Barger sought excitement in military service. However, his plans were thwarted when officials discovered his true age, leading to his dishonorable discharge from the Army. Despite being commended as a skilled young soldier, the revelation of his underage enlistment abruptly ended his military career. This setback marked the beginning of a tumultuous chapter in his life. At number five, the abrupt end to his military career propelled him in a different direction, one that would eventually see him as a central figure in the formation of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. After leaving the army against his will, Sonny Barger embarked on a path of self-determination and resilience. On April 1, 1957, at the age of 18, he co-founded the Oakland, California chapter of the Hells Angels, marking a pivotal moment in his life and the club's history. This era saw motorcycle clubs rising as symbols of rebellion, challenging societal norms, and forming tight-knit brotherhoods centered around a love for riding. Barger's involvement showcased his natural leadership, charisma, and unwavering dedication to the Hells Angels ideals. Despite his youth, he played a crucial role in establishing the Oakland chapter, 
setting the stage for its future success within the club's hierarchy. This move solidified Barger as a trailblazer, shaping the chapter's identity and cementing its place in the Hells Angels' legacy. During a time of growth and expansion for the Hells Angels, Barger's leadership was instrumental. His commitment to the club's principles fostered unity among members, transcending mere association. His early initiation into the inner circle of the Hells Angels speaks volumes about his determination and deep involvement in steering the club's course. Number six. Now let's delve into one of the most infamous incidents in Sonny Barger's history, the Rolling Stone concert at Altamont Speedway in 1969. The Rolling Stones organized this free concert as the final stop of their American tour. Seeking assistance in maintaining order amid the massive crowd, they reportedly turned to the Grateful Dead's management, who suggested hiring the Hells Angels as security. However, conflicting stories swirl regarding the exact agreement between the Stones' management and the motorcycle club. Instead of paying the Hells Angels a fee for their services, they were compensated with $500 worth of beer, a bizarre arrangement given the Angels' violent reputation. Predictably, chaos erupted. On December 6, 1969, the crowd clashed with the Hells Angels. With too few security measures in place, the once harmonious concert devolved into a crime scene. Tragically, the chaos led to at least four fatalities, including the stabbing death of 18-year-old Meredith Hunter. The events at Altamont became a symbol of the darker side of the counterculture movement highlighting the dangers of unchecked violence and the consequences of inadequate security measures. Number 7. Now, in 1972, Sonny Bargier faced a life-altering event, a conviction for narcotics possession. This led to a four-and-a-half-year sentence in Folsom State Prison, known for its tough conditions. Inside, Barger, once a free-spirited leader of the Hells Angels, grappled with the stark realities of prison life. Stripped of his freedoms, he adapted to strict rules and the constant risks inherent in incarceration. Despite his confinement, Barger's reputation transcended the prison walls, earning him respect among fellow inmates. Reflecting on his choices, Barger reevaluated his life during his time in prison. However, legal troubles persisted. In 1979, he faced federal racketeering charges, adding complexity to his story. Convicted for his alleged involvement in organized crime, Barger spent another year behind bars. Number 8. In another twist of fate, Sonny Barger found himself behind bars once again, this time for nearly four years. His imprisonment wasn't due to racketeering or illegal possession, but for his involvement in a conspiracy to blow up an outlaw's motorcycle club clubhouse in Louisville, Kentucky. Rivalry between motorcycle clubs often led to clashes, and this incident highlighted the volatile nature of outlaw biker culture. Despite the severity of the allegations, Barger maintained his leadership within the Hells Angels. His brushes with the law were a recurring theme in his life, but each time, he managed to retain his position of authority within the club, underscoring his resilience and determination. Number 9. Sonny Barger's influence goes beyond the motorcycle club scene, reaching into entertainment and literature. Surprisingly versatile, Barger made his mark as an actor and author. In iconic films like Hell's Angels on Wheels and Hell's Angels 69, he showcased his charisma and presence on screen. His portrayal in Hunter Thompson's Hell's Angels, the strange and terrible saga of the outlaw motorcycle gangs, added depth to the outlaw image. However, it was his role in the TV series Sons of Anarchy that truly spotlighted his authenticity. Drawing from his own experiences, Barger lent credibility to the portrayal of outlaw biker culture. Beyond acting, he penned five captivating books, including Hell's Angel, The Life and Times of Sonny Barger, delving into the history and evolution of the Hell's Angles. Through his creative pursuits, Barger offered insights into his life and the tumultuous world of motorcycle clubs, leaving an enduring legacy beyond the road. Number 10. Lastly, have you ever wondered about the white patch on Sonny Barger's throat? In 1983, he underwent surgery to remove his larynx due to throat cancer, altering his breathing and communication forever. Despite this, Barger remained unwavering in his dedication to the Hells Angels and motorcycle club culture. His resilience in the face of health challenges highlighted his enduring commitment to the brotherhood he cherished. However, tragedy struck on June 30, 2022, when Sonny Barger passed away at 83. 
His official Facebook page confirmed his passing, expressing gratitude for a life filled with adventure and emphasizing the importance of family and brotherhood. His death at the age of 83 from liver cancer marks the end of an era. Let's explore the life of the man who built and led the most notorious biker club in history and discover how his loss impacts the world of the Hells Angels. Sonny Barger's full name was Ralph Hubert Barger, Jr. He was born on October 8, 1938, in Modesto, California. Growing up was tough. His mother left when he was just four years old, leaving him and his sister Shirley to be raised by their alcoholic father. These early years were marked by chaos and hardship, shaping Sonny's rebellious spirit. In school, Sonny quickly became known for his confrontational attitude, frequently clashing with teachers and classmates. His rebellious nature couldn't be tamed, leading to numerous suspensions and eventually dropping out entirely. At 16, he sought a different path by working at a local grocery store, but the lure of adventure was too strong to resist. Sonny attempted to join the United States Army, seeking discipline and purpose. However, his plan was cut short when officials discovered he had falsified his birth certificate. Dishonorably discharged, Sonny returned to Oakland, ready to embark on a new and unpredictable journey that would shape his legacy. Formation and Rise of the Oakland Chapter In the late 1950, Sonny Barger's path crossed with the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his life. Drawn to the camaraderie and rebellious spirit of the club, Sonny quickly became an influential figure within its ranks. In 1957, at the age of 19, Sonny Co. founded the Oakland chapter of the Hells Angels. This chapter would soon become one of the most powerful and notorious factions of the club. Sonny's charisma, assertiveness, and natural leadership skills helped him rise rapidly through the ranks. By the early 1960s, he was the undisputed leader of the Oakland chapter. Under Sonny's leadership, the Oakland chapter grew in influence and reputation. He had a vision for the Hells Angels that went beyond local dominance. Sonny played a crucial role in unifying various Hells Angels chapters across the country, transforming the club into a national powerhouse. His strategic thinking and ability to inspire loyalty were key factors in this expansion. Sonny's efforts didn't stop there. He worked tirelessly to shape the public image of the Hells Angels, emphasizing their brotherhood and freedom while downplaying the more violent aspects of their activities. His media savvy helped the Hells Angels gain notoriety and a larger-than-life image that fascinated the public and media alike. Through his leadership, the Hells Angels grew from a local motorcycle club into a symbol of counterculture and rebellion. Sonny's vision and determination were instrumental in creating the legacy that the Hells Angels carry to this day. Leadership and Influence Sonny Barger's leadership style was a powerful mix of charisma, fearlessness, and strategic thinking. He had an undeniable presence that commanded respect and loyalty from his fellow Hells Angels members. This combination made him a leader and an icon within the outlaw biker community. Barger's media appearances played a significant role in shaping his public persona. He knew how to work the media to his advantage, appearing in several films about the club. These appearances, along with being the subject of Hunter S. Thompson's book, Hell's Angels, a strange and terrible saga helped craft an image that was both fascinating and fearsome to the public. One of the most notable events during Barger's leadership was the Altamont Free Concert in 1969. The Rolling Stones hired the Hells Angels for security, paying them with beer. The event turned chaotic and resulted in multiple fatalities, including the infamous stabbing of Meredith Hunter. This incident cemented the Hells Angels' reputation for violence and also highlighted Barger's influence in high-profile events. Despite the club's notoriety, Barger made efforts to distance himself from its more criminal activities, 
He often portrayed the Hells Angels as a group of misunderstood rebels, rather than outright criminals. This savvy positioning helped maintain a certain mystique around the club, while attempting to soften its rough edges. Through his leadership and media manipulation, Sonny Barger left an indelible mark on the Hells Angels, turning a local motorcycle club into a national symbol of rebellion and brotherhood. His influence extended far beyond the club, impacting popular culture and the public's perception of outlaw bikers. Legal troubles and controversies. Sonny Barger's life was marked by numerous legal troubles and controversies that cemented his reputation as a notorious figure. His involvement in criminal activities led to frequent court appearances and a string of legal battles that kept him in the public eye. One of the earliest and most notable incidents was the Hollister Riot in 1947, a chaotic event that put the Hells Angels on the map as a symbol of rebellion. Though Barger joined the club after this event, it set the stage for the kind of notoriety the Hells Angels would continue to attract under his leadership. In 1970, Barger was arrested on narcotics charges after a significant amount of illegal drugs was found near his home. This led to a high-profile trial in which he was sentenced to a short jail term. Despite these setbacks, his influence within the club remained strong. His humorously termed gangster era saw numerous run-ins with the law, from kidnapping and assault charges to attempted murder accusations. In 1973, Barger faced one of his most serious legal challenges when he was convicted of possessing narcotics for sale and possessing a firearm as a convicted felon. This conviction led to a 10-year prison sentence during which he continued to exert control over the Hells Angels from behind bars. Even in prison, Barger's leadership and influence didn't wane, as he managed to maintain his grip on the club's operations and culture. Cultural Impact and Media Presence Sonny Barger's impact on culture and media was significant, shaping the way outlaw biker clubs are viewed. He appeared in films like Hells Angels, on wheels and documentaries, such as Gimme Shelter, showcasing the wild, rebellious spirit of the Hells Angels. These appearances helped craft a mystique around the club, blending reality with the larger-than-life image that fascinated the public. One of the most influential works about Barger was Hunter S. Thompson's book, Hells Angels, A Strange and Terrible Saga. Thompson's detailed account of the club and Barger's role in it brought the gritty and dangerous lifestyle of the Hells Angels to a broad audience, further solidifying their place in American pop culture. Barger's influence extended beyond the screen and page. His charismatic leadership and public persona contributed to the enduring image of bikers as rugged, freedom-loving rebels. He managed to balance the club's outlaw image with a sense of brotherhood and loyalty, appealing to both admirers and critics personal life and relationships. Sonny Barger's personal life was as eventful as his public one. He was married four times with his fourth wife, Zorana, standing by him until his final days. Their marriage, which began in 2005, was filled with shared passions for motorcycles and adventure. Sonny's earlier relationships were marked by tragedy and turmoil, including the death of his first wife, Elsie Mays, due to an embolism. Barger's health was a constant battle. In the early 1980s, he was diagnosed with throat cancer, which led to the removal of his vocal cords. Despite this, he continued to lead and inspire. In 2012, he faced another challenge with prostate cancer, but fought it with the same resilience. Publicly, Barger was seen as the fearless leader of the Hells Angels. But privately, he was a man who faced significant personal struggles. His battles with cancer and his steadfast dedication to his loved ones showed a more vulnerable side of the legendary biker. Final Years and Legacy Sonny Barger passed away on June 29, 2022, after a brief battle with liver cancer. His death was announced through a pre-written Facebook post in which he reflected on his adventurous life 
and expressed gratitude for being part of the Hells Angels. The post urged followers to keep your head up high, stay loyal, remain free, and always value honor. Barger's funeral, held in September 2022, was a massive event attended by around 7,000 people, including notable figures like former Fox News host Tucker Carlson. This turnout underscored the profound impact Barger had on those around him. Sonny Barger's legacy is multifaceted. He left behind a powerful influence on the Hells Angels and biker culture as a whole. His leadership, media presence, and personal resilience shaped the public's perception of outlaw bikers and ensured that his legend would endure for generations to come. What do you think Sonny Barger's most significant impact on biker culture was?